Hey everybody and welcome to a very exciting Wild Ride with Steve-O. I'll tell you, Scott Randolph couldn't even contain his excitement. As soon as we got done, he said, man, Amanda Cerny's a 14. <laughs> I mean, dude, she's an attractive lady, no doubt. And this is a terribly exciting episode. But let me tell you, man, you know how I was talking about collecting pee? I had this plan to do the world record highest belly flop ever into pure urine. And we were all saving, peeing into gallon jugs, collected over 190 gallons. But the thing was that those gallons were so dark, man. I wasn't drinking enough water, man. Turns out water's really good for you. And I've been going way out of my way to drink a lot more of it. And that's why you always see me with these great looking tall boys of water that look like beers but really it's like the best water out there it's called liquid death and i'm telling you this company is the best because they they use these cans which are infinitely recyclable man death to plastic that's the deal so drink more water don't mess with the plastic. Go with the recyclable tall boys. You got your sparkling, the mountain spring water. And if you go to liquiddeath.com slash Stevo, then you get a free set of koozies with your first order of any case. I'm telling you, man, I drink it all the time. I feel better. My pee looks better. And, uh, well, my pee doesn't look any better than Amanda Cerny. So let's get into it. Ladies and gentlemen, Amanda Cerny. Yeah. I want you to meet my co-host, Scott Randolph. Hello. Nice to meet you. Have you guys met before? Never. Okay. But we're kindred spirits with the OCD. Yeah, we we already bonded over our OCD, so that's great. Yeah. (laughs) Thank you so much for doing this. I, oh, I'm so, I was so excited when um, my manager told me Steve-O I was like, hell yeah, uh, I haven't seen or talked to you in like forever. So it's a great catch up moment. It really is an end. Uh, you've been so kind to me over the years, you know, like going back to I, I think the first time we met was right before I shattered my ankle doing this thing. That was 2016. I what, believe. with the skateboard? Yeah, with the, the porta potty Both ankles. Oh, yeah, I broke both feet. Um, but I remember it at that time, it, I was still pretty new to, to kind of making the leap from, like, old school entertainment into, like, digital entertainment. And I showed up at, I, I don't know if it was your place or someone else's place, but the you filming. guys had, Yeah, you guys had this operation where you were filming these skits with mm. iPhones and I was mm. like man these guys are like 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 huge personalities and they're like editing within an iPhone it was so counterintuitive to me and well I I thought you were amazing and super sweet because one you come from such a strong entertainment background and then here we are with our iPhones <laughs> shooting things and then you're coming to collaborate with us and I'm just like that is like the coolest thing because especially at the time when you did it a lot of people didn't really understand it they didn't really think it was a thing they didn't understand the numbers behind it they didn't understand like the potential of it and then there you are right in the beginning of it just diving full force into it because you saw it so for me i was just really impressed by that well well thank you and and to be fair the numbers were there at that time i mean not the numbers that you've put together since but I think that collaborating with you represented like the biggest bumps in my like Instagram following that I had experienced. So it was certainly a favor that you did for me. And it's so interesting to me too, the, like the, the old versus the new. You know, like I was always a, a huge Howard Stern fan and he would be talking about YouTube. Like, what is it? I don't understand views. Like, what are we like clicks? Like, what, how does that, you know? And then yeah. lo and behold, you know, all this meteoric success and mm-hmm. uh, congratulations. I mean, wow, hey. you've killed it. <laughs> it's funny because a lot of the people that started on Vine and YouTube and like obviously had to like carry it onto into Instagram and other platforms just because Vine is no longer around. Like, thank God we did that. But um, even at that time, our goal, I 
I can't speak for everybody, but my goal was to get more into traditional film and TV. But it, it's, it's so interesting that we always, like we're having so much success on the platforms that we're on in that moment that we just, we want where the grass is greener on the other side. And then we're just like, oh no, I need to do traditional film and TV and then I'll like be successful. So it's it's funny to see that you were coming from traditional into yeah. digital work. And it does give you a lot of freedom because essentially you are your own boss online and you can create your own content and you have that complete freedom. But there's something to say about like going to a set and just being able to play a character or just like, you know, not have to think about every single element of a production is kind of nice as well. So right. it's, it's an interesting kind of... Um, you know, experience both sides now and seeing how like both are great in their own way, but so very different from each other. For sure. So you moved to Florida. It's been a couple of years already. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm from Florida, so my whole family lives here. My mom lives like super close to me. My sisters are like 30 minutes away. Like Miami's right there. It's an easy like travel hub, and I'm always back and forth between LA still. So cool. Yeah, we'll be and out in Florida, Florida soon. I am. Yeah, my my family is still in Florida. My sister is in Boynton Beach. Oh okay. shoot, my sister's now moving like uh, to kind of the center of the state in a random move. But my dad's in Lake Worth. Oh, cool. Yeah, I mean, I'm all like southeast, so that's. That's me as well. I'm in um, like West Palm Beach area. Yeah, Stewart. I mean, I'll never forget. It was the Stewart Playhouse, I think, the 700 seat theater where the Love Doctors, the, this, these local radio DJs, had a, a talent show. And I called in and I said, I'm Steve O, the alcoholic gymnast, and I'm going to pound a, a booze on stage until I'm visibly drunk and then do acrobatics. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that was in 1996, and the crowd started chanting, like, Steve-O. They were screaming, Steve-O. And I remember thinking, dude, they would never scream Steve. And that was, like, when I really committed to being Steve-O, was in Stewart, Florida, at that show. Really? 100%. I credit Jesus. those. I credit the love doctors for me become, because I had been kind of, like, thinking, dude, if I'm going to have a real career and try to be like a, a famous person do i want to have this like corny goofy nickname steve O? and i was conflicted about it until i heard those people screaming in stewart i'm so happy you came to stewart because that was like <laughs> a great decision yeah i mean it, it's counterintuitive too to think of stewart being the home of amanda cerny you know mm -hmm. like because it's, it's, <laughs> once you get north of like really west palm beach then mm -hmm. it becomes less glamorous kind of Florida. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's it's true, but it's like Stewart's such a cute little like boating town. It's just sure. really quiet. I'm like uh, I don't I'm still understanding like I, I'm an introvert, but I'm also like I like to be out doing things and be productive, but I love being home. Like I lo I'm like a little hermit crab. I just if, so for me it's like okay, when I'm home, it's like my moment to just like reflect and like set new goals and work on different things. And then I set myself out into the world and I'm like, okay, and now I'm like, okay to do it. Cause like mentally I'm good. So I remember, really I remember of the, you know, the few times when we, when we worked together making videos thinking, wow, like you've got like sort of different modes, you know, it's mm -hmm. like, sure. Okay. Now you're on camera. You're, you know, being funny, talented. And then all of a sudden, like you switch into like, this needs to be there. That needs to be, you know, like, like super <laughs> yeah. producer and like, you know, like it, it, it was really Thanks, impressive. Director <laughs> yeah. I was, I was super <laughs> impressed by all that. And, uh, oh my God, I remember it did it like, it, it was, uh, the last time that we filmed a, a video, Amanda and I, I showed up with Lux, right? And uh, Lux and I were st like pretty new in our relationship. I'm gonna level with you. This story I'm about to share is totally embarrassing for me. And you know what else is really embarrassing? 
body odor, man. And with this crazy summer heat, we're all sweating more than ever, but we don't have to stink more than ever if we choose the right deodorant. And I choose Native. Why? Because they don't test on animals, super important. They don't have aluminum, which clogs your pores and does all kinds of scary things to your health. And they only use ingredients that I've heard of that I know what they are, like coconut oil, shea butter. I'm telling you, this is a great company with great values and an even greater product which doesn't compromise on performance keeps me smelling good and feeling good all summer with this crazy heat and i'm telling you i wish scott randolph would use it because he might stink a lot but hey you don't have to stink a lot and you can get a killer deal on it right now by going to native d-e-o dot com slash devo that's n-a-t-i-v-e-d-e-o dot com slash devo that's going to get you 20 percent off your first order and you're going to have a great time ordering because they have 10 different awesome scents to choose from my personal favorite is coconut and vanilla mm, i love it who knows what your favorite's going to be because all 10 cents are amazing now you go to one more time native D-E-O.com slash Devo, or just use the promo code Stevo. But get on over there because that's 20% off your first order, and this company is going to leave you smelling good and feeling good. Now let's get into that embarrassing story. You know, so she's just like checking stuff out. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm going to go over and do this thing. So I show up at Amanda Cerny's place with Lux, and I've got the bottle of... Is that the lotion? Dove dishwasher, which looks like semen. And like, and my, and I'm like, oh, I've got this great skit. Like, I'm gonna, like, you're gonna leave. You did that with Lux there. I did. Like, Lux was there, and I'm like squirting fake cum all over the place. Oh it was like God. the most like wildly uncomfortable. Like, yeah. I mean, dude, like for for how funny I thought it was, I don't think that was like. I think most people were like, um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I like, I'm like, all right, everybody has their own like humor you know you're hilarious like for you like you loved it in that moment i'm like i'm all in all right this is like this is your video let's do it you do you (laughs) steve (laughs) you do you yeah you uh yeah yeah, you were a great sport uh, (laughs) oh my god i think maybe maybe i'll dig that one up and repost it to to promote promote was lux what was lux doing the whole time like oh yeah that was was great babe (laughs) like that was the first date sweet like how is she doing by the way she's fantastic she, she's yeah. working right now she she gives you her best she's working on an uggs uh shoot Ooh, she does awesome. like um uggs. like prop, prop styling and and wardrobe and stuff yeah. she's she's art department for uh will this uh podcast air before the dania beach dates because if so, it'd be a great oh yeah, be a great chance to give it a little plug oh, right here. Oh, that's true. We're coming to I, do the bucket list show in Dania Beach, which is what more, venue? It's oh, a I'm new sorry. one. It's brand new. It's I, I cut off your promo. Oh, I just screwed oh, it. Oh, good. No, no you, you enhanced it. You, 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 <laughs> <laughs> but, but I saw on your tour dates the Dania Beach is, and I've never heard it's, of Dania it, Beach. Yeah, it's it's the Fort Lauderdale area, and um, the venue is it's an improv. It's it's a comedy club. That's awesome. I've noticed a lot of different comedians are going there and like for for their tours and stuff lately. And then I saw yours and I saw Dania Beach and I looked up where it was because I saw it on like Esther's. Do you know Esther Pavinsky? I don't No, she's she's hilarious. She's like um, a comedian, a comedian and a good friend of mine. But she um, has her show there, too. And that made me look it up. And then I saw yours and yours is end of August. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm totally going to go. Oh, well, that would mean the world to me. And and when I see, like, you know, my, my post liked by Amanda Cerny, I just, I always think, man, that's so cool. You know, <laughs> like, it, it's it's so really cool nice to... to... How, how many Instagram followers do you have at this point? You like, have over, over 30, right? Mm, I have, like, 25? Oh, I thought maybe? it was, I think you were, like, 28. I don't know. Do you look at people with, like, 50 and be like, ah, dude. <laughs> like, I'm, I wish... like, one, one day. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's crazy. Um, so the, I, I'll never forget to, I think it was right around the time that, that you left LA, maybe a little bit before, all mm-hmm. of a sudden, like the guests, like, oh, and yeah. the, I mean, was that like huge to be like, 
Yeah. Um, like, like they, they, it's, it's Guess Jeans. Is, is it a jean company? Yeah. <laughs> but they're but, but they're like they're like major high fashion like. Yeah, they're world worldwide. Like, yeah, to be the face of Guess was like. Yeah, I was shocked. I was like, really, they want me to do that? <laughs> but um, yeah. So I was the face of Guess for a year, and then um, just done different campaigns with them. But it was insane. Like I've. Been, so cool to see your face on the side of a skyscraper and be like, and they even put my name on all the advertisements and everything too. I'm like, this is freaking awesome. Like what brand does that? And for me, I'm so used to um, just a lot of like no's in the traditional space. Uh-huh. So to get a yes from them and interest coming from them to be the face of their campaign, I was shocked. And it was something like when I was younger, I always wanted to do and I would always see the billboards. But like when I was little, I got bit by a dog on the side of my face and I had to get like 52 stitches when I was like 10. Uh, and I was like, I am never going to be a model ever in my life. Like that was like my mindset. And then, you know, being the face of gas, I'm like, wow, I'm really proved myself wrong there. <laughs> like, wow. nobody cares. And so. I'm, I'm super interested that you said, uh, you know, used to knows instead. Does that mean that it was you and your team who approached Guess? No. So it actually happened because I did this music video and it was um, with Red One, French Montana. Um, uh, who else was in it? It was just like a mix of all these different artists and it was in Morocco where we filmed it and Guess sponsored the video. So it was just all so like random but awesome and put together and um so that's how we got to know each other was through that video and then one of the girls abla that worked at guess really advocated for me to become the face of a campaign and then paul marciano um followed me and saw all my comedy sketches and he was like i really like that you're a personality and that you know you have a lot more to you than you know some might say pretty and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I'm like thank you and then um so I went and I went in the office I met everyone and then from there it just I got the the confirmation that they were going to move forward with the campaign so it was pretty cool. That's cool super cool and that really represented like a breakthrough moment for like digital personality being like mainstream like huge billboards like yeah it was it was awesome like i i just remember going underneath the billboards and being like doing those cheesy photos of just yourself under a billboard sure. and I'm like i'm like oh like <laughs> I, I didn't post that but <laughs> yeah I, I remember being duct taped to a billboard <laughs> you are so awesome i have so many questions for you scott and i i'm horrible with names usually i have to say it like three times i got it it right no, it's Scott. Right. It's Chad. <laughs> That's absolutely it's Scott. You should have done that to me. I would have felt so horrible. <laughs> and by like, all I means, ask, not alone in this. ask anything you want. It's, it, we're easy. Oh, good. Well, first off, how did you two meet? And start <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> anything no. but that. <laughs> oh, boy. She really couldn't have asked us a much more sensitive question than that. And you know what? We really couldn't have given her a much more sensitive answer. And speaking of sensitive, can I tell you that my nether regions are very delicate? And that's why it is so important to me to wear me undies underwear because the fabric is breathable. It could not be more comfortable and it's very sustainably made. That's why I love this company, man, MeUndies, and their styles are endless. This underwear is just plain cool, man, and I want you to try it because you're gonna love it as much as I do. Plus, don't take my word for it, MeUndies has a confidence level in their product that's unmatched. If for any reason you don't like it, you send it back, no problem. No questions. Just get your money back. But it's not going to happen because you're going to love them. Here's the deal. MeUndies.com slash Stevo for 15% off your first order and free shipping. Plus, again, if you don't like it, send it back. Got your money back. No questions asked. And if you join the membership, even better, dude. Then you get 
discounted pricing, free shipping, and early access to all the new cool styles. So hey man, head on over to MeUndies.com. Don't forget the slash Stevo and just start picking it out, man. This is going to change the game for you. Step up your underwear game right now. Now, let's get into this vulnerable stuff. I, I, I was approaching 40 years old and thinking that that my lifestyle of, uh, of, of being basically promiscuous wasn't the, <laughs> the, the road to happiness. And I, I, I just felt like it's becoming kind of a bad look and it's, I, I don't want to be that. I feel like if I want to be happy in life, I need to learn how to have a healthy relationship. And so I addressed those issues and I got very, very serious about sexual sobriety. And at one point, uh, facing a bunch of tour dates, I just, I needed help on the cock blocking side. So Scott, I said to Scott, like, you know, I really want to be serious about, about uh, you know, a, a healthy approach to, to my life and, 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 and not acting out sexually. Can you come on tour with me, share a hotel room with me, and sell my merch so that you're right there and, and actually be a formal, professional cock blocker. And, and that's amazing. Um, yes. What made you think of Scott to Scott. be the one? I'll, I'll let him uh, out. So, so I, I, uh, <laughs> I ran into Steve. What? Uh, in the same general area of that uh, program. We, we, we were both double winners in 12-step uh, recovery, meaning that we both had issues with drugs and alcohol as well as compulsive sexual acting out. And so I knew that Scott was uh, what, you know, dealing with the same issues and, and kind of on the same page. So mm -hmm. as, a, as a function of fellowship, and, and working towards becoming the man that the love of my life deserves. You know, I had a lot of work to do to get ready to meet Lux, you know? And, yeah. uh, and so that was what brought Scott and I together was, uh, it was doing that work. And um, Scott, Scott would take a bullet for this dick. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, I mean, he, yeah, like we, we, we were successful in that. And, um, and then I started, so then the first, oh yeah, the first show Scott shows up, he's like, all you sell is t-shirts and books. You don't even have a credit card swiper. And he put together this merchandising empire. And now oh. all these years later, Scott's my tour manager, my business partner, my co-producer. Like my co-host, you know, like we've really, that. really built a lot. And, and by, by eliminating the distractions and the stress of all the, you know, like acting out, it's, yeah. it's really allowed me to, to narrow my focus and be super deliberate and not waste my time. And, and as a result, we've been able to, to achieve some pretty, some pretty big things. Yeah. You got a, a good circle around you. I, I feel like that's <laughs> one of the, the most important things towards success is just having people around you that are like right. going to motivate you in the right direction and are like-minded. So you guys were like-minded in the cock blocking strategy and then that led to <laughs> right. all, the, all the success so far. So. Also, uh, also you got to put people around you who fill in your holes, you know, yeah. like where, like, you know, Scott and I are very much yin, yin and yang because mm -hmm. like he, he's, he's a morning person like i'm not <laughs> you know like i'm like super creative he's super administrative you know like we really compliment each other a lot but i wanted to ask you, you you've been i i knew you for years and uh had no idea what um what your situation was but you've been in a relationship that whole the, the whole time yeah um i'm trying to think in 2015 um yeah, so I, I think I was in another relationship when I first met you, and then that relationship ended, and then I started in a different relationship with uh, Johannes, who I've been with for, I don't even know how long it's been. Like, <laughs> I'm so horrible with time, but we started, and it's confusing because we started off as, like, close friends at first, especially when I was, like, in my long distance relationship, we were just like close friends. And as soon as that ended, like Johannes swooped right on in. And then, um, so then we were like kind of hooking up and, you know, still friends, but not exclusively dating because I just got out of a relationship. And then we were finally like, oh, okay, like we're together all the time and we like being around each other. And then we ended up just 
dating. And then it just happened so organically because we lived in the same building too, right. that building that you went to, the 1600, 1600 Vine. Vine and it's still going. I know. I wonder, I, I mean, it's almost like visiting your old um, middle school or high school if, like, it's, if it's you go back there. More, it's a little bit more like a college dorm. Oh, there you go. Yeah. yeah. I, but that, I, I probably said middle school because like there were also influencers living in there that were like 15. Really? Like, yeah, from like middle of America, like just moved out just to work on their career in social media by themselves and lived in the building. At 15? Um, yeah, I don't doubt it. I, I, yeah. I, I don't doubt it at all. Um, and now, like, it started out like sort of Vine centric. Like uh, now, like TikTok is. I, I, I've I've got a buddy yeah. living there. The, I've got this buddy Spencer X, and he's on like the oh, penthouse Spencer. floor. Like, you know, he's. Oh uh, wow! He's, he's, he's like the king batch of Vine. So it's like um, the, the <laughs> higher the floor, the more like I, influential I guess, you I get, are. I guess so. Uh, he's. I, like, I, told me he's just moving out of there now but are you active on TikTok as well i mean you got to be right yeah i do TikTok. i mostly do instagram i have the most fun on there i just like how organic it is with stories and like actually i still do sk sketches here and there vlogs like lifestyle stuff ah, you so did do the you did make the leap to youtube um Kind of like I've always had YouTube, but I kind of do my vlogs on IGTV. I think they call it like I don't even know if they call it IGTV still. It's just like long form Instagram. Right, right. So, mm. Yeah. Did, you know, I was doing the IGTV thing, and then I saw the retention rate because <laughs> like it, it plays for 15 seconds, and then you have to actually click keep watching and like. Yeah. Way, lot, way few people click keep watching, and that hurts my feelings. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just give them an in incentive around 14 seconds. I know, I try. <laughs> like, I'll, I'll subtitle the first 15 seconds, I'll, I'll yeah. get a cold open. Oh, I mean, I don't know if you had like a, a teaser of what was about to happen. Right. If Oh my God! I was on your Instagram and I saw the the poop in the poop. eardrum. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh. yeah how, how is your ear, by the way? Dude, I, yeah. I, I I went to the to the doctor for my two week follow up, and he said that the hole in my eardrum closed on its own. Wow. <laughs> I'm, I'm almost completely back to normal. Inside? Like there's yeah, no poop inside? I don't think there's poop inside now. <laughs> okay, that's good. They yeah. cleaned it out well. So, yeah, well, that was the thing. I don't think ah. that the I don't think the poop actually broke my eardrum. I think that it was when I went in to get it flushed no. out. The, the the flushing of the water did didn't it. puncture your eardrum. It was probably <laughs> the eighteen hundred psi air gun to your side of your face that broke yeah, your eardrum maybe, out. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. I'm gonna go with Scott on yeah. this one. <laughs> yeah. so, so you said you'd come back to L.A. all the time, and mm -hmm. uh, and and. Like, like what generally is for, for work, I, I presume. Yeah. What, I'm the uh, most productive in LA. Right, like okay. Like go back. But like but this yeah. this is what we do so much on, on the podcast. We, we speak with wildly successful people and we try to kind of glean from them their playbook on how mm -hmm. like they become so successful, which makes me dying to ask you like what types of different business initiatives bring you to LA like what what are you most active doing these days well I'm always active creating um it's honestly where I feel like the most excited whenever I'm just like you know working on different projects or even just producing different projects so like right now I I really want to produce a, a rom-com so I just started working on that and then you know that's a whole process in, in itself and then being out in LA and meeting with like different writers and all that is, is kind of a fun process, but I'm always creating stuff for Instagram, for social media. So, you know, in LA, like a bunch of influencers live out there and sure. like collaborating has been like my whole life through like Vine, like sure. Instagram, YouTube, everything. And it's just, it makes it more fun because you get to see your friends and be productive with your friends. So I think that's great. Um, and then also like I've, Gotten involved in the crypto space oh, <laughs> for me. Oh, can you talk about? Uh, yeah, me too. Can you talk about uh, which coin you're investing in at the moment? Um, I am heavy. Well, I have a lot of holds right now because, like, you're a hodler. You know, I'm a hodler. You do that, and I'm like, all right, hodl on. But um, so 
I'm a strong believer in BNB. So that's a it's the Binance coin. Uh-huh. So that's one of like the biggest exchanges. And then um, I also am a fan of the Doge. I know it's a meme coin, but I believe in the people that are behind it, like Elon Musk. I, I think, you know, he has to have a strategy for what he's doing. So I bet on that. Um, so that's definitely a bet because the coin has no utility, really. It's just kind of kind of there and you got to believe in the people behind it and hope uh, it goes to to the moon. But <laughs> so that's kind of like a way riskier one. But then again, I don't really think so because I have a lot of Doge. I have like over seven million coins in Doge. Wow. So. Wow. Good for you. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. sad. <clears throat> That that's got to be a, a juicy piece of information. Yeah, that 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 stock's gonna push a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, and of course Ethereum and Bitcoin. You know, those what about are Cardano? Like, I I like Cardano. I don't have it, but I like it. So I I see a lot of people posting. It's like it's so much to watch. It's not all that I do, but you know, and I'm in all these like uh, chats and you know little groups about crypto with people who like do it full time and that is their livelihood they manage funds for other people so for me i get juicy bits of information from there as well but i have to be realistic with myself and i can't spread myself especially if i'm managing my own portfolio which i really love to do whether it's in crypto or if it's in the stock market i just like like knowing where my money is and what it's doing and i've always been like that um is that ocd that's an ocd thing right because i'm the same way i love to manage my own portfolios yeah, but it makes it makes you wonder if it's oh. But before I go into that, like I want to know what coins you're in before we leave crypto. <laughs> I, 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 uh, Ethereum, Doge, and Cardano. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, so we're 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 together. Uh-huh. We're in this, Steve. Are you in crypto? Or? I've, the only crypto I have is from the underwhelming NFT sale that I did, which was uh, in <laughs> Ethereum. I think uh, okay. I'm trying to remember what it was. Uh, I started the auction at like one ETH, which at the time I believe was about three thousand dollars. And yep. like by the time the the auction was over or whatever the the sale was made, it was like one point oh like or, or I forget what one point what it was, but. I money's money. Money's money. But yeah, with, I, I only say underwhelming because the numbers that we were hearing, like like Logan Paul, like like with five million bucks in 24 hours, like, you know. Never compare, Steve-O. <laughs> that, yeah. That's the way to success. Well, you know. I mean, I, I understand don't compare, but. They the, set the bar really high. At the same, yeah. at the same time, you know, like I remember when, when I first signed with the full screen, which got me motivated to do like disciplined, regular YouTube posting. Mm -hmm. I was, I I walked in there and I said, I'm looking at like the Paul brothers. I'm looking at all these people, like, and I'm trying to figure out like, what am I not doing? Like, I'm not lazy. Like I'm ready to work. Like, let me figure it out. And and I think by comparing, I got motivated to just figure it out and and work harder and and, uh, work smarter. So I like, I, I like, I like, like uh, a little bit of healthy jealousy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's good. As long as you're not uh, putting down your accomplishments. Oh yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not at all. But yeah, I haven't been too <laughs> concerned with, with, with crypto. Yeah. Um, how much of your uh, business is is in branded, like integrated posting? Um, well. I don't really have it divided with, I would say, you know, I have a good chunk of long-term partnerships. So mm-hmm. for me, like I just uh, line, launched um, a long, long collaboration. We've been working on this product for a while, which is our bald move shave kit. So I started that with um, Truly Beauty. So I just launched that. I started um, 626 Wine. That's a company that I own with um, my best friend King Batch. So yeah. that we drink wine all the time. We're like, why not start? Why not? Start why not? <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then, um, yeah. So it's just like working on things that you know I have equity in that I also have real interest in. And then, yeah, you do the things that are here and there that like you know you you learn about and you like the product and you try it out and it's good and it all makes sense coming together and then you can do campaigns like that. But I, I, I like to think of longevity as well with it because if I 
sell out on every single like post and every single thing. It's like, you know, people are smart. They're going to see and they're just going to be like, OK, like, why are we here? So for me, it's like I like to do things that I'm heavily involved in and heavily like on the back end. of. Man, that I like that. Mm-hmm. I like that a lot. And here I'm thinking that the only reason I don't do more brand integration is because I can't get more brand integration. To <laughs> like people are like, oh, we don't really need the shit in the ear guy. Yeah. They're asking you to be on billboards. Steve's putting himself on billboards. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, I'm going to tech buying it myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's like, you don't want to put me on the billboard. He's going to buy the billboard and then tape himself to it. That's so I great. Think, would you say that brands are more open minded today than they used to be? Or they're more conservative or about the same? Super open minded. I mean, it just depends on what it is. There, there's just certain brands are just never gonna fuck with me, and that's fine. And, and it's it's better. I mean, it's better because my, like my social media feed really isn't a bunch of uh, you know branded stuff. I'm always trying to sell my own merch, but I like to keep the the promos for my merch like at the end of a video where I've already delivered like some quality entertainment. You know, right. so nobody Talent. feels. Yeah, like yeah. I, I'm always gonna tuck it in at the end. And like really make it my priority to to give people something that they're glad that they saw. That's great. It's all about balance and giving value, whether it's like extra incentive or hookups for your audience or just like that awesome content that you always produce. So nobody produces content like you. Like (laughs) I I can never do what you do. And likewise, I think that you making a rom-com is an absolute (laughs) slam dunk. I mean, really? Fuck yeah. I mean, you're you're. Your content's hilarious. It's, you know, your audience is massive. Like, like you're you're mainstream. You're established. I think that that that, that should be the first conversation. Who's uh, Ryan Gosling? No, no, no. The um, <laughs> the, the guy did a uh, train wreck yes, with uh, train wreck. The, the, he did train wreck with Amy Schumer, that director. Oh, uh, yeah, dude. The guy he also did funny people. <laughs> the guy, he did yeah, the, uh, guy, yeah. the guy that everybody knows but doesn't know. Who's uh, pulling this up? Is it me or? No, he's uh. <laughs> he's like the biggest Jed guy. Jed Apatow. Yeah, Jed Apatow. Ah, yes. <laughs> yeah. You know what's a good, the the best rom com probably of the last forty years was that uh, movie Long Shot with Charlize Theron and Seth Rogen. Have you ever seen that? I've never seen it. It's the funniest movie I've probably ever seen in the last 20 years. It, Long it, it, time. We have different tastes it, in mu- it, it movies. It was pretty good, but I don't know. I, it, it, Amanda what, can do way better. What was the one? I love the classic rom-coms. When but Harry what was Met the Sally. One? Yeah, I mean, it's great. But what was the one with uh, David Spade? And um, oh, it, it was Amy, a newer um, one. We just oh, had her the on the newer, podcast. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, for the, oh yeah, they, they, there's like two, the the, 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 the the wrong girl, the other girl, something like that. <laughs> we suck. We <laughs> never be good in Korea. No, we um, just the wrong Missy. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, the wrong, wrong Missy. Missy. Yeah, 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 yeah. We enjoyed yeah, that. that. So funny. I mean, it's not your typical rom com, but it was hilarious. Like she did amazing in that. Yeah, she was very but talented. I'm happy you think that's good for me because I feel like that's good for me too. So I, I think I think it's a no brainer. And when you said that, I'm like, dude, I can't believe you didn't already do it. I know. You know? Well, that's how I feel. Is there like, hence your bucket list? I yeah. mean, <laughs> like for me, that's something that I've always wanted to do and I still haven't done it. So it's like, <laughs> all right, well, you know why I haven't done it? Because I didn't have a Scott telling me I on the prize. You're damn on right. This yeah. So I need a cock blocker to fill in my hole. <laughs> you need a cock blocker to fill it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Me on the right direction. That sounded like an oxymoron. <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> Amanda's bucket. Uh, Amanda's bucket list is like I want to film a rom com. Steve's like I want to blow a load while jumping out of an airplane. <laughs> so, I mean, like, each your own. Who's right. to say what's wrong and right? Right. But I I want to hear. Um, is there something off your bucket list that you haven't been able to do? That's I haven't like- been able to get cauliflower ear. Some people just can't get cauliflower really? ear. And no matter how much I feel stuff. I like you should have it already. I know. 
I think it's just you, you it, it's like what Steve will do it said there's no such thing as losing in Vegas it's just quitting yeah uh, right yeah. I mean you get to a point where like we, we, <laughs> you know and, and Lux doesn't want me to have cauliflower ear anyway so maybe that's just as well what about a boob job it's a sign well, that, but that's you, not know, you are in LA next to her. you that's are in LA happening. and there's fillers there's Oh wow! Yeah, we can go test it's out not some a Botox. Bad idea. Yeah, not a bad but dude. I'm sorry, Lux. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't do it though. If it's not meant to be, it's not. It's yeah, not meant to be. there's a couple of things that we haven't done yet. Like I, I just recently purchased a smart car, just so that I can crash it into a brick wall to make sure that the airbags work. <laughs> Oh my god, like, the while, little one. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'll be all dressed up like a crash test dummy. It'll be cute. And, cute. Uh, yeah, yeah, but, but we're, we're just getting ready to do that. Yeah, that's funny. I, when we were buying the smart car, they're trying to like upsell us on like the warranty and the insurance. Like, <laughs> no, no, and that like finally we're like, look, we're just gonna crash this in the next seven minutes, so you don't need to upsell us on anything. Yeah. But how how did this list? Okay, so you have ideas, and then who do you do you even bother pitching it, or is it just like no, I'm no, no, no. Well, when it, it, it started out because I got into stand-up. You know, I, be, yeah. I started touring as a stand-up like 10 years ago. And mm -hmm. and I did like a, my first comedy special, which was pretty traditional in the way I performed it. And then as I put together my second comedy special, it, I started editing in the footage of the stories that I was telling in my act. So it was this multimedia affair. And that yeah. went so spectacularly well for me. I'd really stumbled on this multimedia stand-up comedy that when I started putting together my third show, now I wanted to go out and film exclusive, like just over-the-top crazy stuff to make an act out of. And then after mm -hmm. each bit, I screen the exclusive footage. And wow. in doing that, I was like, okay, well, I've kind of done it all, except mm -hmm. I, I know that I've got like a bunch of ideas that were just way too out there to ever like really be serious about doing. And now I'm gonna be serious about doing them. So I call it my bucket list. And you know, I had the, the vasectomy Olympics, like, which yeah. is super gnarly, like the, like blowing a load right. simultaneously while I fall out of an airplane. Like, uh, like what? The, 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 the epidural. The, like, a anesthesia, general anesthesia coming in through an IV like while I'm hauling ass on a bicycle, <laughs> you know, like, like pretty high yeah. level stuff. And, uh, and so I did it all like, like never mind how illegal it is, how X rated it is like, because I had nothing stops me from bringing it on tour. And so that's what I'll be doing in Dania beach. Yeah. So it's already, you've done it all already. Now For the most part. Yeah. About it. For the most part. And, and I've been incorporated in like the, the, the actual comedy show is a journey through this absurd bucket list. And, mm -hmm. and uh, it's as much a story about my relationship with Lux because to do all that stuff, it inherently has implications on my relationship. Oh, yeah. And then like, yeah. so it, it's just the, the, all this crazy stuff and it's, it's this you know, pretty polished act and after each bit, like there's a, a screening of, uh, of the results. That's amazing that you put that together and then also just amazing that you still think of even crazier things than you've already have done like for me do you ever have um any just like writer's block or like did you already have this list ready of things that you wanted to do or was it like coming up with them most of it most of it was uh i was sitting on for a long long time and just like there were crazy ideas just to say you right. know some of it yeah. just came up naturally <clears throat> i already know what the next tour is going to be what my fourth show will be and that's going to be like, it's called Gone Too Far, where I actually go in for like, uh, you know, surgical breast augmentation. And I get the like a flower ear. Yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, <laughs> I mean, dude, the, the Gone Too Far is, is one fucking. And I got to make the phone calls to make it happen. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. That's going to suck. But then we, how much fun, dude? Like we had Amanda Cerny on and, and, and uh, she had legit questions. So That's I got great. to talk about me. <laughs> He's yeah, like, do you no, want to come I, on next week too? I'm not. I'm not interested in me. I'm like, I'm bored with talking. I I don't like talking about myself. I, so I much rather talk about 
you and all the things that you're working on. So. I, I catch a lot of shit from uh, in the comments, like, shut up, let her talk. No, <laughs> you know? oh my God. Oh, I hope the comments are nice. But then again, whatever, it's the it, internet. You're going to get both sides. Right. But, <laughs> and is that something that ever, like, Actually, it's too cliche of a question. Never mind. I, I retract it. All I right, it's it. fine. What? What? what um, like, like you strike me as uh, like a, a socially conscious, like good person, and and I, and I wonder what like causes are important to you. Like for me, like animals is is my thing. And uh, and I love that about you. And I love that Sea World. Uh, yeah, super thanks. Day. Yeah, <laughs> but and you know, like I'm a dog lover myself. I have my pups, and I'm obsessed with them. And I totally like don't know how people can be cruel to animals. And that's the first thing that makes me cry in a movie and in real life, and seeing all the clips online. Like I, I love that you do that. And to me, that's so amazing. Um, for me, it's the same. Like I've been vegan for over. I don't even know. I'm horrible with time, but over 10 years. Wow. And then, um, and for me, it's like, like, I wouldn't even think of, it started for health reasons. I was like, okay, it's healthier lifestyle because I'll be more conscious about what I'm eating. And then you slowly learn more and more and more about the things as you go down the rabbit hole of something. And then you're like, whoa, like, this is so important. So for me, that's huge environment. That's also huge. I mean, yeah. we all utilize it. We need it. This is like our everyday. So it's like showing some things back into the world. And I'm a heavy believer in karma and I'm a heavy believer in, you know, just you have to do things that you're passionate about and you can't spread yourself too thin. And especially when you're working towards different causes, like it's great to do things here and there and promote awareness here and there. But sticking to specific causes really makes an impact on those causes. And that's what I've learned. Cause I used to try to do just like everything. Right. I was like, how can I help use me? Whatever, like whatever right. platform you need or how, where can I show up and help out? Like even for my guest campaign, I was like, can we do a charitable component to all the sales in this? And just like pick um, a town in Turkey to help out with. Cause we know it's more <laughs> places we launched it was like help the children at the orphanage and right. then um so it's just like i i was spreading myself really thin with that and now it's just like i focus a lot with the united nations i work with them on just like promoting awareness about the environment and the different impacts and also just like raising funds for different causes just to promote educational content as well just because i feel like one of the best things we can provide to people is education and awareness to you know make it so they actually care enough to make the changes in their own lives that will create the most impact so that's kind of like what i've learned over the years i guess that's epic well i have a question for both of you guys and i think i already know the answer but i just i want to ask it anyways if you guys both had a hundred million dollars to start your own cause what would the cause be i would buy it well talking about environment but i would buy a plantation probably and just like load it up with dogs i think <laughs> and just like start, start so taking like care of those rescue dogs from yeah but yeah. that's so like i feel like that's so selfish of me though because I, I <laughs> that's love, what all dog people say because they love dogs so much yeah i love them so much so like maybe i should you know create docu more documentaries maybe i should like go to areas and provide resources for education it's a that's a nobody has offered me that yet so i didn't i like to do my back end <laughs> research and uh i'll work on that <laughs> cool. yeah you would do dogs obviously i mean uh, animal sanctuary animals. like like we want to open up an animal sanctuary and and uh i think that there's a lot to be said for having an experience with an animal like i think if more people like hung out with with cows if, if, if they had the opportunity to to like pet a cow look into its eyes and see like wait a second like you know yeah. so i don't know I, I, I like the idea of uh of, of creating a a place for people to have that experience to really give uh you know some weight to to animals where does that love for animals come from with you? Like in your childhood, did you have pets? Did you, or was it- I had pets. Um, it, it started out like when I was a circus clown. Like I thought like, uh, 
<laughs> you know, the, the animals in the circus, I was just like, wait a second, this sucks for them. You know, yeah. like... You, but you're like, um, you love your dog so much that like we would fly home, we would yeah. be working all night and then he would want to fly home at like 6 a.m. just to be with his dogs when we first started working, you know? And But were you <laughs> like that with your dogs when you were growing up? Yeah. Are you, are you always were? Pretty, pretty much, except when I was growing up, I was even worse and like smothering them with the really, food, you know, like I'm like with, with with my dogs, I'm like the grandma that's like pinching your cheeks and it's like okay, you know, and like she yeah. doesn't, she, she loves you, but it's like yeah. okay, good enough, you know, like that's how I am with my dog. They're like, they're like okay, well, with the fucking all right. I didn't know that about you. I didn't know you're always like that with all your with your dogs. Pretty much, yeah. Can I ask what you, because I have like basically two puppies. I have one that's a year old, one that's like nine weeks old and I'm obsessed. Like I'm a crazy dog lady and that's completely what I want to be in my life. And that's perfect. Um, but then I'm like, oh shit, I have to travel still and wow. I need to get a nanny, I think. Yeah. Like, to well, we, we, we have at our house a little barn in the back with three goats running around the backyard. We put them up at night. We let oh. them out in the morning. We got four dogs in the house, two cats. And oh. absolutely, if we're not going to be home, like it is not okay to just leave the, the house. So yeah, we have uh, we have people, the pet sitters, that, that we, we let them know like, hey, we're going to be out of town. Like, can you stay, live at our house uh -huh. and take care of our babies? Yeah, because I'm going to have like a whole list of you got to cuddle at least four <laughs> hours a day. It's 100% Lux's requirements. Yeah, because yeah. you need the cuddles. Yeah. Like I was, I was talking to one of my <laughs> friends and then she was like um, talking about dogs sleeping outside. And I was like, how? Like without with just by itself. And then yeah. she was just explaining to me how that's like normal for some people. And I'm just like, I couldn't. I couldn't like in my, in my dogs if I did that I think they would just like die like yeah. I think they'd be so sad right but, um, not only yeah. are dogs inside but like we like like I, I lure them onto the bed with treats you know <laughs> like because we, we want <laughs> like we, we we really want all four dogs on the bed with us like all the time and then yeah. like but like the what what happens we can i call it the dine and dash i lure them onto the bed with the treats they eat them and then they're like okay cool we're out <laughs> <laughs> mine lets me pick him up and put him in a like a baby position and then I, i'll lay him right next to me and lay his head like right on my chest and he'll stay there for like a good 20 minutes and then he'll slowly start to creep <laughs> away and then when i realize when i go to grab him he just darts out of the room and like your heart drops a little yeah. in that moment you're just like uh, we have that <laughs> completely in common, 100%. Okay. That's great. Um, but the, the thing is with me, and this is like something, you know, I always like kick myself over. It's like I do have two Dalmatians. I didn't get them from a shelter. Like I am like not as – apparently I'm not as good as a human as you are. But um, I, I got but, back uh, on fish. So, so, <laughs> so I, I'm over here eating fish. I like – Okay. See, it's and that's one thing too, like – and the reason why I have Dalmatians, I'm like, I feel like I have to justify my Dalmatians. But like I, when I was little, I had one when I was like five years old. And again, I don't, I'm not good with time. And then um, my parents gave it away and back to where they got it from. And then I just remember crying every night being like, I'm going to own or a, like I'm gonna mother so many different Dalmatians and I would dress up as a Dalmatian like I have childhood <laughs> pictures of me like full on Dalmatian with a nose and ears going to school dressed like that and then I'm like okay like I don't think you have I to justify anything and I think that <laughs> I think that the biggest problem with animal advocacy is infighting between like people who are advocates for animals but feel that mm. other advocates for animals aren't advocating enough like you're yeah. not vegan enough and it's like wait wait a second guys we're all on the same team you know we're yeah. all working towards <laughs> the, let's recognize okay. progress let's let's encourage Crazy. what people do exactly yeah. like and that's nobody's perfect and you can't be right. perfect like no matter how hard you try like you cannot be perfect and that's something that you know, I've realized too, it's like, all right, you know, I'm doing a lot. I can always do more and I can always grow and be better. But at the same time, it's like, I feel 
good about what I do thus far and I feel like I'm doing pretty good For so sure. like and and same thing like and I see that a lot online too and that's why like I even sometimes like refrain from calling myself yeah. vegan because I'm afraid yeah. of like people attacking me for having honey sometimes and I'm like right. I, I, I couldn't agree more I couldn't agree yeah. more like and and what upsets me more than anything is uh the the way that the the, the vegan community will will really be deceptive like to, to you know some of these documentaries like when they're saying you've got documentaries saying sugar doesn't cause diabetes it's animal products like it's like okay you know like how yeah. if, if you google like the title of certain vegan documentaries mm -hmm. and like debunking them it's like you know it's just pages and pages of i'm a doctor and that's bullshit i'm a vegan and that's bullshit and i'm like it's it, it represents a step backwards people don't like being lied to once you tell them something that's not true then they're never going to take you seriously ever again and now you've mm -hmm. just hurt the cause by like you know misleading people and i'm particularly pissed about it because i'm in the fucking documentary <laughs> you know they put me in it and they put me in the fucking documentary and then i'm like oh i see it and I'm like, this? What? it's called what the health oh Yes, everybody was talking. I need to watch it now. Everybody it's, it's, was talking I mean, about get, it. Get, get ready to see a bunch of factually wrong shit. <laughs> you know? I'm excited for that. I mean, now that you tell me. <laughs> like, I'm excited to do the back end research and be like, oh shit. He's yeah, right. I mean, like, and, and whatever. But, but I just think that we, we should be promoting progress. We should be promoting compassion. And we should yeah. be doing so with honesty and integrity. Yeah, and not, um, you know, just being listening and then also just like not drilling people. Like right. I see some, like, some of these um, platforms that are like vegan platforms or environmentalists and like people that I follow that follow me back. And I see like some of them posting, posting the most extremist right. stuff and then just like saying, calling people names and like that's how they interact about like getting people to understand what they're saying is important and i'm like i like who's gonna listen to that i would never listen to somebody who's yelling at me right ever like i'm not i would never learn that way i would be scared and i'd be like yes <laughs> and then like go away right but it, I, I would only really listen if somebody was like hey like this is the facts behind this like you know and just said it in a in a different way but you know then again that's the internet but it's also you see companies doing that and you're like oof like <laughs> for sure so yeah. is there uh is there anything that for the people who we've retained that we can direct them to <laughs> we lost them at dogs um <laughs> like talking about how we cuddle our dogs no um, i think that was fine okay. i think that was fine but but yeah is there, is there anything any calls to action that we can share for me. um yeah check out 626wine.com yeah um, check out my social media i'm always posting on instagram at amanda cerny i'm on tiktok i'm everywhere um and yeah what's oh, the what's behind 626 is 626 the area code it's my birthday and also my best friend's birthday oh wow so how about that i'm 613 i was born in the 626 oh. area code that's why i was yeah wondering. he's pasadena uh -huh. Oh, um, see now you just have to have it to represent. I know. So the um <laughs> the the shave kit, where do we get that? Um that's trulybeauty.com. And is that for dudes as well as chicks or just chicks? I mean the scents are a little bit feminine, but uh <laughs> if you like fruity, like are, fruity are, fruity scents. Are you in the fruit. are you in the cosmetics game just like everybody else? I I I would say I'm into like health and wellness and for me like i i like oils i like um skincare so yeah I, all right yeah. i'm Good. i'm a variety show myself okay so truly beauty six mm -hmm. two it's trulybeauty.com yeah six two six wine.com yeah. s-i-x two six we we went fancy uh s-i-x Two six, wow! <laughs> like six nine. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we were going for. <laughs> for sure. I, I love it. Okay, and it's at Amanda Cerny across the the boards, across all yep. platforms. Oh, it's early. Yep, and uh, and and be compassionate and kind to animals, 
and don't yell love at people. Love each other. One love. <laughs> don't yell at people. Nice comments or not. Yeah. Ad- adopt a Dalmatian. Cool. Adopt a, hey, hey, technically. <laughs> yeah. I'm not Just mad be at ready, that. though. You're, you're going to have me start talking about Dalmatians now. Oh. Yeah. I, I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I don't think I get up to justify anything. And I'm so I'm so grateful. I'm so honored that we got to do this. I, uh, yes. I, I really, really do appreciate you. And uh, c- again, congrats on all of your success. It's really incredible, I, to, you know, just to see this meteoric explosion of your uh, mainstream popularity has been a real treat. Thank you, and thank you guys so much for having me on your podcast. It, like, wild ride. It was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. I'll see you in uh, Dania Beach. Oh, I love that so much. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, I'm thank- excited. Yeah, dude. I- that, that was an exciting wild ride. And I know some people are going to be like, ah, oh, dude, Steve-O fucking talked about himself. But, dude, she was asking me questions about myself. So, and my answers were entertaining, I think. I think that was a b- badass episode. And as always, the people who stick around to the very end, you're the ones who matter most to me. So thank you very, very much. Yeah, dude, it's an exciting time and it's a wild ride. Woo!